Kwane, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, bonjour, bonsoir, depending on where you are watching this episode from. Um, welcome to Tech Chef Africa, and this is your girl, Nana Efwa Benial. Um, today we are going to have a conversation about um, data science, and um, guess who will be joining us on today's episode? Um, we have Derek Kweku Dabazui whether we are going to have a conversation centered on um, data literacy and why it matters to our society. Um, yeah, so without wasting much time, let's welcome Derek on today's episode. Okay, so guys, um, we have Derek here. Derek, welcome to Tech Chef Africa. Thank you. Please, how are you doing? Very good, yourself? I'm good, I'm good. So he's a fancy. We are both from Takra, the Western region. So today we are going to do a blend of Tadi Fancy, Walesha, and a brothel, you know, you know. But Derek, before we ask you what you are going to prepare for us today, what's the reason behind your, your, your beautiful hair? I, I jealous it though, because see, I wish I can touch it, but not now. What, what's the inspiration behind it? Um, okay, so... Um... Thank you for having me here. Um, I don't have uh, much to say about my hair, so far as I'm concerned, it's something to just keep myself uh, busy. I mean, because all the time, you know, I do have a uh, lot to I'll be doing. Okay. I don't think I'll definitely want to have time, you know, all the time going to the salon. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So much to do. Oh, okay. Um, it's quite unfortunate that. Um, there are a lot of questions that has come up on. I know, right? Because everyone is curious <laughs> to know, what's yeah. What's the reason? Some, some people tell me to braid it. Am I going to do Rasta? It's all so good on you, though. It's something, that, uh, it's, it's something that is peculiar to take people. But, uh, mm, but mm. I, I don't think there's anything But I think it, it fits your brand because it really defines uh, whom you are and what you do. Like, it's, it's more of like you're not really faking it for people to know so you're doing stuff to please them. This is whom you are and this is how you present yourself. So accept me if that's yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that is that is that has been the case for me. I think I've never had well, there are just only few times that I've had those encounters where uh, you go to a place and the interest is that without your hair, with this hair you can't yeah, you can Aside that, I mean, I get to some places. Everyone is busy, you know. No one cares about <laughs> what we came in, yeah. how you are dressed or whatever. We are just interested in what you are here to give us. Okay. So, I think uh, gradually people would tend to accept certain things. Uh, I wouldn't really want to sound controversial, but mm. I think it, mm. it isn't be worth it. Yeah. If if. If I have to join an organization and their culture is that we don't work with people with such hair, then I just have to, you know, cut it for them. But until then, I don't think um, it's anything bad or something. Okay, I, I perfectly agree with you. But what are your fun facts? <laughs> Give us what? two fun facts about you. Well, first thing is, I like things that are very challenging. Okay. Uh, because they tend to put my... Um, my my intelligence on point. Okay. Whether or not I'm able to solve that problem or not. No. And at the end of the day, I think it's all about being able to brainstorm around what you are capable of using yeah. your knowledge yeah. to, be able to solve that challenge. Yeah. In many of those times, you have to definitely go further to read. You have to take a course. You have to possibly mm -hmm. ask and all that. All right. It's makes you understand that well, we don't live in the world in isolation. And yeah. And knowledge is continue to be power once it's mm. being used. The second thing I would say is that it's about people. Mm. I mean, when I see people, I'm very happy. Um, hey, Charlie! I, I do love remote working remotely though, but I think uh, when I see even one or two people around me, they are working and yeah. they are having fun on the other side, it's, yeah. it's, it's sort of bring relief. I mean, you try mm. to do away with so many things because you have an opportunity to talk to people in real, they tend to share what they have with you and you also tend to share what you have with them. Interesting, interesting. It's in there and it's gone there in your mind. But Brent Ben Kakana, what kind of thing? It's gone there in your mind. So, as you can see, I have some yam. 
I'm a menorah yeah. fan, sir. The recover for that then. Sorry. Even this bandari, I'm on. And then the other no, the Ghanian, the other Ghanian divan. Okay, Ghanian divan. Eba 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 takwa dia yepe bio pa and bio ni yo ni forms aya de ben ni ya. Mhm. Me de some for you be a kahun aya no kitchen like especially in our. Uh, you know, okay. And I'm okay. able to talk. Okay. But in the day, when we are, it will face me here because at the end of the day, or day it will be there. I'm mixing here, but why are you more doing it? Oh, yeah. So, no. It's no. Oh, buyer, no. Yes, I'm a tumor, mm -hmm. buyer, mm -hmm. muko, mm -hmm. anyo. Garlic is the meaning of fancy, so we can mm -hmm. see garlic, and garlic. fish, um, and tomatoes. Yeah. All right. Um, I can tell that so it's something simple that yeah. everyone can cook, yes, yes, yes. cook at home. Yes, more, more, I mean, it's simple, but it's simple because I know yeah, very obvious people are very and I'm waiting for full solutions. More okay. Than the, Okay. Who send them the major mama one kasa mo wadi? Who is Derek? And also share a little bit about your career um, timeline or career portfolio with us. Okay, so I'm um, start now. I start the uh, Derek. Mm -hmm. Uh, we me first born to my parents. Okay. Like, uh, my mother and father. Okay. Uh, born in Obuasi. Okay. Um, oh, it sounds like LFT. The year 1993. <laughs> okay. And uh, like a November born because okay. I love November. All right. Then for education, the, mm -hmm. it's been a lot because Miss Kulu or Boise, Takrade, Kumase, Kakra, okay. even before to the tertiary. Uh, okay. Um, um, for the sake of time, I mean, you know, Mami, you A lot has really gone on so far as my education has been concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, make the, the most turning point has been at the senior high school, but most of the time, when you go to the senior high school, that's where mm -hmm. you tend to study a course, and the course yeah. becomes very relevant to you so far as we are moving forward. And see, after senior high school, going to KN University to read actuarial science. Hey, you also went to KN University? Yes. Oh, wow, beautiful. Yes. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a proud um, technocrat. <laughs> and see, I'm in Boakaka. Yes. In the, I went to KN University in 2012 mm -hmm. and read actuarial science. Okay. Um, between 2012 um, to 2016. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Uh maybe a science and you know, all you know I have to do national service. Yeah. So I had my national service with SIS Insurance Company. Okay. Uh, at the Takwa office. Uh, most of the time you now them places you know they only take the session a person to do the service there. So mm -hmm. I was fortunate to be the only person at the office there. Mm -hmm. Uh, between them period, you know, a lot of things really happened uh, because with insurance, when you are working with people with data, yeah. you tend to also understand that some other things that happens in our Ghanaian setting. Mm -hmm. And so just after my national service, I had applied to schools, including my own K University. Okay, so for I went, masters. I, yes, I went back to read uh, Master of Business Administration. Yeah, oh, wow. This time around, I decided to specialize in information uh, systems. Why? Because from... From actuarial uh, science, now they call a master's in business administration. Exactly. Like, so was there is... any particular reason why it's here yeah, selected? Like you automatically diverted from yeah. Yeah. So this is where the, the interesting thing is. Uh, I do remember that even before I had enrolled for the program, mm -hmm. I had met a couple of other people. I mean, now uh, parents and. Mm -hmm. Um, other lecturers as well who yeah. advised that oh why why didn't you continue with uh, 
maybe uh, a true sign so that mm -hmm. you could read an MSc or an MPhil in it. Yeah. But I think the most relevant reason that I told them was that I have been able to get myself into a program mm -hmm. um, which is was more of a foundation for whatever I wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, of course, actuary science really gave room for you to branch into many other sectors. Oh, like really? We want to go to finance. Mm -hmm. We want to go into insurance. Yeah. We want to go into even data. I want to even, of, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Because we do basically everything. Everything. So that has to, yeah. If, yeah. And yeah. if I want to divert into business administration and then specialize in information system, that mm -hmm. means I really want to focus on something to do with understanding yeah. the technology and yeah. how people are supposed to use it. Yeah. And see, yeah. when I was when I was in, in business school then, um, we had a lot of interesting courses that we were doing. Okay. Uh, myself, I was fortunate that I had begun, you know, uh, doing certain courses that were in line with what I wanted to do because um, I heard so much about data science when I was in undergrad. Okay. And because I had, we had a, a senior colleague um, mm -hmm. who was um, studying for his master's in the US and was telling us much about actuary data science. So I got interested in and looking at that, the things that I was always really interested in, I mm -hmm. think it was the best fit for me. Okay. And see, in business school then, uh, yeah, especially in second year, I did mm -hmm. remember that uh, because our courses were all, or our lectures were all moved to uh, weekends, mm -hmm. I could use the Monday to Friday to explore other, other learning fields. that I was doing. Okay. And that is where the AI and the data science story started. Oh, wow. Yes. It's each other right from the beginning, in the old. A time will come, I will pursue something under AI and machine learning and extra. Yes, like I said before, um, at undergrad, I had there already, yeah. yes, but there wasn't so much in the country. Mm -hmm. And if you need any resources, you also have to use online resources. Mm -hmm. But yeah. then what's really helped was that when I had gone to school to read my master's, I had yeah. met some few colleagues who I could speak to yeah. and who could interact, uh, who could connect online and then we were just doing things that could really help us to move up with the program mm -hmm. or the, 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 the food that I wanted to enter into. Mm -hmm. And see, I must say, I'm a, I can give mentions like Dominic, okay. um, who was a final year student in the um, KMC Business School. Okay. Uh, he introduced me a very good friend uh, called um, uh, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. uh, who's been very, been very wonderful in the field of machine learning. So, oh, wow. I mean, from Emmanuel the, is also in Ghana. No, Emmanuel is currently in South Africa okay. uh, having his uh, studies at games um, campus all right all right and it really helped because i now could rely on other people who were doing this i mean because the point was when we started or when i started learning there wasn't any sort of community that you could say i, yeah. I have this community that guys are doing things and i could just you know join them and then we study more now we, in to then, uh, um, yeah, very no I think which will be then I'll just uh, cut it again All right. into so, pieces into okay. four from All right. each of them. Yeah. So oh you can continue with your talk yeah. now. And like I was saying, the 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 fun part about learning is that if you are doing it and you have other colleagues that you can connect with, mm -hmm. it really helps. Um, in many of my my mentoring stuff with um, young people, mm -hmm. one, one of the things that really comes up is those times. Yeah. I mean, they tell me that they do have challenges because they don't have anybody to connect to and all that. And I tell them, yeah, that is how it is. <laughs> but then it's good that now we have other senior colleagues in the yeah. system that we can easily connect with. And that is what really pushing most of them to do what they do today. Yeah. All right. All right. Interesting, interesting background when it comes to how you got to find your purpose in working in the field of AI. Yeah. So um, let, let's come to the working experience to us all. Yeah. When you discovered that you have interest um, for machine learning and how future work could be like using data to support it or using data to really define the kind of solutions that we can bring out 
to people. Yeah. And throughout your experience on building projects and making some analysis and research, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. How has it been so far for you working in our local continent or our local country here in Ghana when it comes to um, artificial intelligence or machine learning, or let me just say AI? Okay, so how has the working experience yes. been like for you? And do you think that we are adapting to this whole new thing called it is not new though, but to Africa, some yeah. some of us, especially yeah. those who find themselves in the <laughs> rural community, it's totally new to them. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, this is this, this is a very broad question. I think. Um, oh, feel free I'll to need... break it down. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I will have to look at it at so at so many points. Okay. I think one one of the first things that I will look at is you know capacity mm -hmm. and capacity wise we are not looking at just you know trying to build an industry where you have only few people who understand the data okay um one of the challenge that we had with adopting the early technology right mm -hmm. in the early part of the 90s coming into the 2000s yeah well happened with spreadsheet and internet was mm -hmm. that when spreadsheet and internet started every organization thought was this is supposed to be a unit on its own okay so you had organizations where you could have only few people who could have access to spreadsheet and oh, they can wow. understand spreadsheets yeah that has been that has been the, the situation then same with internet you still have organizations or companies that you go into and mm -hmm. not so much of the people can really work with the internet. Mm, they have mm, a little mm, challenge mm. and they have to call, hey, let's call the IT people because yeah. they are in charge of that. Yeah. But that is wrong. By that, we are using a vertical way to adopt it, which is very wrong. Yeah. What we are supposed to be doing is that we are supposed to have everyone in the organization know at least bit and part of what the technology stacks are. Mm -hmm. So in in machine learning field, the current challenge that I must say that we have is that it is quite kind of this way. Um, someone contacts me that I want to build a model mm -hmm. that I can use as part of my customer service. Mm -hmm. So uh, should I bring some? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can bring it here now. Okay, so once that um, model is built, that means we are going to deploy it, mm -hmm. and then the IT um, department of the organization are supposed to handle it. Mm -hmm. And so in as much as possible, when things are even happening, yeah. yes, they don't get to... Other people in the organization don't get to understand what is really happening because it's about this is for IT people. Mm -hmm. And so for if I consulted for the organization, whatever I built is just going to go through myself, mm -hmm. some senior management members who are just going to be the concerned because yeah. they are supposed to move the resources and all. Yeah. Then the IT department, they are also just supposed to be handling what really comes in and what goes in out. Mm -hmm. And that is where the situation lies. I can really build solutions for maybe the Ghana police service and say, based on what has been happening with crime mm -hmm. in Accra for some number of years, mm -hmm. this is one model that we can use to track uh, criminals and how we can deal with it. Okay. But it, the situation is that if there's a policeman at personal police station who mm -hmm. cannot understand how this system, the system works, works and what data we are dealing with, mm -hmm. then we are not doing any job. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, if the um, um, education in tech, yeah. like people knowing how to use tech mm -hmm. softwares, tech devices, then it means that continuously we will keep producing tools but people are not will keep producing the right tools yeah. to kind of reduce the natural exactly. workload on us but if the people Don't. are not well educated enough or they are not well literate enough yeah. to use the application then it's kind of yes. a way so the problem is that we need to be able to adopt a horizontal approach to you know 
whenever there's uh, some sort of tools that we have. We will come there. Yes. Uh, we will come there. <laughs> we, it's kind of where we are, we are going deep. We are going deep already. So we'll come there. Um, I think right now you're almost through with this. Yes. So maybe you can put it into your saucepan on fire. Okay. And um, you come we'll back, back then, we continue, continue with it. With and now when you come back, um, what I really want us to discuss mm -hmm. about has to do with um, data literacy, yeah. um, which is the topic of today. And you've okay. already said a started, whole lot yeah. of, yeah, you've already started, you've said a lot already. Yeah. So to anyone who is watching, who haven't heard about data literacy before, or who doesn't even know what it means and what it does and what it really stands for in our business, in our uh, at our workplace, and even in the communities and the um, social amenities that we find ourselves here in yeah. Accra, Africa, the whole world. What is data literacy? And why does it really matter to us as an individual then when we are done with individual, we'll move to business okay. and the workplace. So ah, uh, you can just All right. come. So generally, uh, the, there has been a lot of talk about data, all mm -hmm. right? And when we talk about data, we are looking at anything that we can quantify mm -hmm. and anything that we are very responsible to help us in you know, solving problems. Mm -hmm. And the the, the amount of data that we have today is mm -hmm. much more because we have been able to move into a world that we now have more devices and each of these devices is able to help us with collect data. Okay. So even before we got to this show, we are going to have a conversation, we are going to send text, we are going to send voice notes, yeah. we are going to send a lot more media, mm -hmm. which all of them help us to work gather more well, data yeah but the interesting thing is that of of, of about 10 million people who might be having access to mobile phones or yeah. smartphones in our country how many of them do now understand that when i am sending text message or sending whatsapp messages to my friends within an organization or within uh, our community mm -hmm. and i'm also having to I mean, um, do other many other things like using my boat app or Uber app to make a request, mm -hmm. or maybe even using my phone to mm -hmm. um, sign up to some program. What of all of these get to do for me? So we call something sort of metadata. Now all of these information that is being gathered about myself mm -hmm. can now be used to take a decision. Okay. So. What happens is that as a matter as a, as these continue to go on, mm -hmm. we now can now understand that this is Ifwa. Mm -hmm. And this is what Ifwa is interested in doing all the time. And so if that's the case, then I can even sit in the US, not working in Ghana, and I now understand that there's a girl or there's a young lady who lives in Accra. Mm -hmm. She does what we call tech shelf, trying Africa. to bring up tech shelf Africa, <laughs> trying to bring Founders, yeah. or founders of startups and other organizations on mm -hmm. board. Okay. Now, this sort of information, the problem is now is then is how do we make sure that all of the people who are within this space mm -hmm. now understand what all of these information that we are talking about to really matters. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer about I have a national health insurance card mm -hmm. and that I can just use my card to go to a hospital and then get um, um, a health care delivery. It's about I have an insurance card. Mm -hmm. Now I do pay my premiums on time. I do go to hospital for checkups and this checkup data can then be used to understand how I can plan my meal. I can, the, the, the same data can also be used by the government to understand where we are supposed to invest our monies or where we are supposed to put when more resources. When it comes to agriculture. And and, uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's the, the, the thing is, it doesn't have to be with we trying to produce more data scientists or mm. data analysts or anything. Mm. It has to do with a continuous way of learning where everyone in the country, in an organization as individual, can better understand the sort of information they generate around themselves. Mm. Mm, and that is mm, where mm. the whole conversation about data literacy is supposed mm, to be. Mm. So 
I am collecting data, I am gathering information, but I just have to be somebody who can understand what I'm doing, I can relate to it, that can then be used to drive or deliver a decision that can help to reduce losses or reduce costs and then make more profit. That is what we are looking at with data mm. literacy. Mm. So mm. it is it is a bigger responsibility. I mean, it's something that's supposed to be a sort of knowledge that every person on earth is supposed to have or acquire. And understand. And understand and be able to use it. Use it. It is the very basic foundation which we need to be able to build any sophisticated technology that we are looking at then it means that we don't need to learn about data science or anything that has to do with we identifying data, communicating with it, and knowing how best to utilize on it to help ourselves and our society. Yeah. Then it means that this has to be taught right from, let's say, junior high school yeah. coming because they also depend on a lot of data yeah, and yeah. resources to, I think, to yes. yeah, learn or anything like that. Yeah, so what has been happening is that many countries, for instance, has decided to make coding uh, compulsory because wow. when, when you're coding, you're wow. trying to, I mean, uh, brainstorm, bring a lot of ideas together and just trying to say that I can write this program to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. I think that is that is okay. But what is what has to be much more important is how we can adopt data literacy right from the very early stage early of stage. every single person. Yeah. You know why data literacy is, is really matters? Why does it matter? So because that's <laughs> that's where I am interested in and more curious about yeah. although I have some understanding in um, analyzing data and yeah. using it for my good, even with Tech Chef Africa, mm -hmm. since I started from season one, yeah. I've been able to gather a lot of data exactly. from the guests who come here, even me going to the market to do the groceries, the monies, the budgets and everything. Mm -hmm. Now through the data that I've gathered, I know that when I analyze this data carefully, I will be able to know, okay, this is where I can cut costs. Yeah. This is uh, maybe throughout the guests who have come on the show. This is what maybe this particular industry is where I need to focus yes. on next because based off uh, me uploading it on YouTube and the comment that I'm getting that, um, from, yeah. people really like um, kind of yeah, specialties exactly. who come on the show. And uh, it, it goes in and it goes in and yes. even it informs me on what I need to do next when it comes to my next episode exactly. of season. Exactly, exactly. So like you just started, yeah. I think you have been able to... Um, I'm a beginner too, I'm also, I'm also yes. learning. Yes. So you said you said a lot about yeah. what you have been able to gather those yeah. data for. Yeah, a little. I think even with what you said, mm -hmm. that could just represent about just 5% of what data I know, right? are collected. Yeah. I mean, um, a lot of people do say now that data is a new oil. Some other put it in the data it's, is a it's new indeed. gold. Data has, yeah. always been, it, it's, has always been yes. rich. It's, it's, it's about the point where now they are employing people uh, so like... So what do you want us to do? Yeah, so what do we need to do now? I have to chop our... Uh, Tomato and and then Let me quickly the wash pepper. this for you. Uh, your vegetables are all washed, mm -hmm. so you can start to cut the ones Cuts that you want to cut. I'll quickly clean um, this one for you. Into there, can you find a year draw away the bunny? Okay, so baby, you know the ingredients are all not in here. Okay. You just have to chop them. Okay. Then move to the, the, the next stage of it. So I'm okay. going to start off with my onions. All right, all right. I'm just going to all cut right. them. Um, sorry for my left hand too so oh uh, well i'm quite sure that yeah you know I'm really admire the interesting you. thing about this is that neither my dad or mom is left-handed oh wow but there is uh my dad's brother mm -hmm. who's left-handed so i'm the only person in the family who's like myself and him okay we are the only left-handed people Oh, interesting. That's the interesting part of it all. So, is it that you use both left and right or just? No, 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 I can't do anything. So you even write with left? Yeah, I do everything with my left hand. In my heart. I love people who <laughs> are left handed. Seriously. Really? I really admire it. Yeah. So sometimes I, I even try to see, but actually no, I say. People say that it's attributed to intelligence and everything, but I don't know. Oh, really? Um, interesting. That, that, is, that, is, that is our part of the world. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, so, I see. Uh, uh-huh. so I see. like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, we've, we've really talked about um, what data literacy actually means. Yeah. So we've talked about how it benefits to the government, how it benefits to the individuals, and yeah. how it also benefits to organizations. And whilst we are still on organizations, my follow-up question to our previous conversation is that how can organizations, right, yeah. use data literacy to inform their B2B or B2C um, decision makings in the company? Yeah, so um, this this is very this is very important um, to me as a practitioner mm-hmm. um, and, and inter- important to even the organization also as well. Mm. I think that now every organization, most of the organizations that are trying to understand what they can use data for, are appreciating it by first trying to adopt it. Yeah. And in the adoption, many of the things that they're trying to do is to use softwares and tools that are capable of, you know, helping them to analyze their data and then mm-hmm. present results. Yeah. But then what is lacking is that you know, data literacy doesn't have to be a one um, stop like sort of skill to be learned by certain people. Okay. It has to be a culture. It has to be an a, a adoption, uh, a strategy that has to start the very time someone enters an organization mm. until the person leaves. So even during the orientation phase of new employees being recruited, we have to or yes. Them on those once, things. once there is a culture of data literacy in the organization, anyone who walks into the organization understand that for our organization, this is what we do, and this is what what we are supposed to be collecting. This is the kind of extent to which certain the data can be given to certain people, and which people are supposed to not have it. Mm. So, in in decision making. I mean, once the information that you need about a particular um, business or unit is concerned, mm-hmm. and everyone in the organization can really understand and then relate very well with the data, then it obviously helps to make things easier. Mm. But then, like I said, an investment is always always has to be a compound one. If you want to make or build a data literate organization, it's something that has to start from somewhere and then going to do continue to evolve. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. as the organizations want to be data centric, yeah. that means it's not about trying to produce certain individuals who only understand the data, how they use mm. it. It has to be a system. This is what the organization believes in yeah. and this is what we do. So if you want to do take businesses, or if you want to even have other businesses with other organizations who are also using data, mm-hmm. then you are presenting them with facts, with information that they can also relate to it and can use very well. Mm. So my advice in recent times to many organizations that want to adopt data literacy. Which is the B2B, yes. um, business to business and business to customers. Exactly. Is that they shouldn't limit this um, whole idea of being data driven to only certain individuals in the country or in the mm-hmm. organization. It should be something that should be uh, be given to, or the opportunity should be given to everybody in the organization so that they understand the processes. And that, like I, I mentioned before, if we need to adopt this sort of culture of mm-hmm. any of these new technology that are coming up, it has to be horizontal. Mm-hmm. The CEO doesn't need to be somebody who can put data collected in any tabular form, run it in um, any tool and then get results. Yeah. That's not it. <laughs> the CEO only needs to understand what data it is they are collecting. And how it impacts the decisions that they make. That is the most important thing. And if this happens to everyone in the organization, yeah. then I don't need to go and employ a data scientist to come and tell me that this is what the organization needs to do or that is what the organization needs to do. Because in most of the times, those things don't tend to be more effective. Mm. Because, mm. like I mentioned before, if it's going to just be about myself going to build a model to be used by um, maybe Ghana Police Service or the Ghana Armed Forces, then I have not really done much so far as data literacy is concerned. It has to be something that 
all of them in the organization can relate well and can use well. That is what I can say. All right. All it, right. By extension, like I said, um, to government and any other organization that are dealing with it, I think in recent times we had situations where our government or the okay. central government has been able to collect a lot of information or data that relate to the sort of things that Ghanaians do. Mm. But you, you yourself, you understand that the data that you have been collecting from those guests who appear on your show, what you're supposed to buy on them, are time bound. Yeah, yeah. Time is essentially very important yeah. when you are working with data. Yeah. And so, if you are collecting data and we are not don't know what exactly we are going to use it's it the for data. at the moment, that's a question mark. That's actually a question so, mark. Right. And I think. Hmm. So I'm going to move to. The your pepe. pepe. So I'm going right. to do exactly the same. So you now. put this yes, in I here. Yes, I put this one here, right. and then I can. When when you are done, hmm. I I want you to elaborate more on how we can use data the rightful way. Yeah. Because as you said, and as people have been saying, yeah. we are sitting on a lot of rich data in which we don't even know how best to analyze it well. Yeah. When it comes to analyzing data, to you, your research and your experience, yeah. at what point do you say that indeed, sorry, indeed, this data has been well analyzed and all the decisions or solutions that has been um, um, brought out of it really make um, significant impact to the whole extension of um, regions here in Ghana. Okay. Well, so let me just start off by bringing in certain um, scenarios. I think that... Oh, Yeah. Hey. I'll do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll try for him whilst mm -hmm. he starts. Yeah. But we are Baba Beji. He will come and take it because I'm not cooking for him. Yeah. He came here to cook for me. Don't please. worry. I'm going to do that for you too. All right. Oh, so please go ahead. Um... What, what I can say about, you know, every data, I mean, mm -hmm. this question is starting from at what point um, can we say we have enough data? Yeah. And at what point do we say that the kind of insights we want to uh, generate from that data that we have collected is enough to help mm -hmm. us take decisions? Yeah. Well, I must, I must say this because um, in, in, in the whole idea of collecting data, mm -hmm. um, it has to, it's our our job as data analysts, data scientists mm -hmm. doesn't only start when we are be given some sort of data to work with. Mm -hmm. In fact, our work actually starts when we know what kind of data we are supposed to collect and how mm -hmm. we collect them. So, Mami, for you believe with me that the the whole um, the, the whole job starts when we are able to have people who have domain expertise or knowledge mm -hmm. in the kind of field that we are associated with. Yeah. And I think that is where we are making a lot of mistakes in, I mean, globally. It's not something that we only have it here. The, the, the point is that we don't have to see data professionals as mm -hmm new crop of people who are coming in from somewhere mm -hmm. and they are just being introduced to the organization to come and work there. We need, to, we need to see data professionals as people who have some sort of knowledge in a particular field they belong to and they have been able to learn the methodologies and the frameworks that we need to be able to use our data. Mm. So what this means is that, I mean, you, you, you do remember, you, 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 can, you can bear witness to this that when we had the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. One of the important decision people that we needed in the field was people like immunologists yeah. and all those specialists. Yeah. Now, yeah. why did we need those? We need them because they have been working in the field and they know what of sort of information they deal with every day and mm. what sort of situations they deal with every day. Mm. So I have somebody who is working as an investment banker mm -hmm and has been doing investment banking for over 20 years, and this person decides to learn data science framework or data professionals, what we do as 
or what data is supposed to frame, or is supposed to be acquired, they're supposed to be using whenever we collect that information. Now, that person is likely to help us understand what really goes on in the field than somebody okay. who doesn't have any knowledge. Waiting for your pepe. So, yes, uh, I think this is okay. Uh, yeah. More pepe will give us more heart, uh, heart attack here. <laughs> Uh, let me really? Just, yeah. Pepe gives heart attack. I don't know about it, but... Um, hey, <laughs> my chef! The, <laughs> if we are to take more pepper right now, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I don't think we can even eat the food, so... Yeah. I beg, this is okay. Um, okay. Today you are the chef also. Yes. So, like I was saying, um, the first instance is... The data specialist has to be somebody with domain knowledge. Mm -hmm in the field that he's working at. Okay. Right. Now, if we are able to have such a person, then that person will help us to be able to do the right analysis. Mm -hmm. What sort of variable we need, what we don't need, what are we looking at, what industry or what units in the organization should we be focusing on so far as our marketing strategy or our decision making is concerned. That is what is supposed to be the goal, mm -hmm. the first goal. Then we can now move it up. Now we have been able to gather the insight. So we need the decision makers to come in, accept what the data is telling us, mm -hmm. and be able to use it to now take the decision mm -hmm. and then adopt it or apply it. Then we can move on with what we have. Okay, 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 okay. Then and, 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 and let me add it. I'm saying this because a lot of, a lot of like I said, a lot of people who are coming to the data science world, learning about data science, mm -hmm. AI, all those technology stuff, think that it is something in isolation that they have to come in and then learn to be able to work, work in tech companies or any, any organization that they want. Mm -hmm. That is not supposed to be the, the thing. And that is why if we have data literate, people, mm -hmm. then we don't need to necessarily have people who are, have come to come in as specialists and then come and work for us. Mm. Because everyone in the organization would then be able to understand Stand. what we are doing. And where does this come from? All of this come from, one, people who can make observations. Secondly, we are talking about people who can make inference. Mm -hmm. You do agree with me that out of everyone in everyone like ourselves presented or uh, presenting on this show mm -hmm. today, it is a sample that we have taken Your from a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. Right. So our sample space that or our sample that we have should be able to help us to make a general inference mm -hmm. about a population that we have. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, if you want to study the population of this country mm -hmm. and then use it to make a decision, mm -hmm. we won't be able to reach everybody. So what we can do is that we can just take a sample of the entire population mm -hmm. and then be then able to use it to work, to make a general statement okay. about the population. Okay. That is what generally you are going to do at the end of the day. Okay. Right. All right. So speaking, speaking of, of this, I think my next question that I was able to derive from what you were saying yeah. um, is how is data largely used, um, 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 used here in Ghana? And even when we are talking about Ghana now, we currently have 16 sub-regions. Yeah. Um, 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 I wouldn't go to that path, but how do you think that data is largely used in Ghana here effectively. Okay, so by Ghana, okay, let me reduce it down. Yeah. Do we mean in terms of the government? In, in, okay, so now let's let's break this down into mm -hmm. let's break it down because when we look at the sector that um, 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 Ghanaians find ourselves in terms of when it comes to our day-to-day -day activities, yeah. one has to do with definitely we we we, we deal with your kind of thing. Policies okay. here in Ghana, so that falls under um, um, the government, and yeah. we eat every day. So that's for that also falls under agriculture. agriculture. Yeah, and we work every day too as well. Yeah. So that falls under firms yeah. or yeah institutions and etc. So let's break it down into these three segments. Okay. Yeah. So we'll first treat with policy. Um, policy first. Okay. Well, so I, I would say that in terms of policy. 
every every policy decision starts with a lot of consultation. Mm -hmm. There has to be some feasibility studies. A lot of consultants will have to be um, engaged. We didn't need to engage a lot of stakeholders and mm -hmm. be able to take a lot of what information or data from them to be able to work, mm -hmm. do what we want. So, what I can say about decision making. <laughs> Right, thank you very much. Then you just do this and let okay. me be here. So, okay. um, should we? Uh, I was. You were talking about. Yeah, we are talking yeah, so about I data. Was on policy, yeah. and I was saying that in terms of policy making, every policy starts with off with a number of um, consultation that has mm -hmm. to be done. It involves stakeholders. Yeah. At the end of the day, stakeholder engagement will obviously help us to come up with. Opinions, yeah. generally, and expertise from people who then help us to make the right decision and to write a very good framework or policy for mm -hmm. our own self. I think in that, in that, by extent, largely, most of the things that goes into every policy will obviously be data. Yeah. And if the policy is going to be effective, it largely has to do with what we have been able to gather mm -hmm. from the people. I mean, if it's a true reflection of what the consultants or the policymakers and the stakeholders involved represented, mm -hmm. then we are in the right place. Okay. But then if it doesn't involve certain stakeholders mm -hmm. and just going to be involved with certain individuals who at the end of the day take those decisions or make this policy yeah. because it tends to benefit them, then that is that is not what we are looking at generally. So, I mean, for government policies, it's purely public sector thing and a, a, um, involve a policy engagement for which um, a number of uh, governance experts and policy makers will be involved in. So, mm -hmm. I, I won't go back. I won't go much into that. But I know that it involves a lot of um, data, and at the end of the day. We do expect that the right uh, policy should be written so mm -hmm. that it will now help the the people. Then we can talk about our Greek. Mm -hmm. Um, the right from farming to generally uh, producing the crop and then making sure that the crop that we are being produced reach mm -hmm. the target market to. Mm -hmm you know, give them so that they can consume the right, you know, nutrients mm -hmm. uh, to be able to stay healthy so that they can help the country to, you know, grow. Mm -hmm. It's a whole supply chain thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, players will obviously be involved, involved in it. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I must say that uh, pieces of it, this are uh, working. I know at every stage, um, there are will obviously be businesses and organizations that will be involved and they may be doing something that uh, should reflect what mm -hmm. should be going on so far as um, the supply chain is concerned. Okay. And I think that the major challenge that we can obviously have in this world will obviously be logistics. Yeah. So yeah. once yeah. we have, I mean, a true um, representation of data that represents all of these players involved in the supply chain, then we can make sure that we then make them useful and then make sure that the right proportions are always applied to where they are supposed to be. How do we make them useful? Yeah, so like I said, it's a whole ecosystem that involves a lot of people. You know, first it's our farmers, mm -hmm. it's our grand. Uh, uh, parents is about our aunties is about even our parents who yeah. are doing farming yeah. and it's about the practice that they also use in their farming 
So I know that there are a couple of organizations that are all trying to come up with how we can generate the right uh, seed for our parents or our grandparents or our farmers to be able to use it to, you know, cultivate on their farm land so that they can produce the right amount of what um, 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 crops that mm -hmm. can be used. Then at the point where they are producing them to, there are also other organizations who go, actually go to buy the farm produce mm -hmm. and then make sure that they are able to distribute them across the entire country and even for exports. Oh. So all of those players who are involved all have some sort of data that they collect. So we can know that in the year 2020, mm -hmm. Region A, was able to produce this amount of um, agriculture produce, mm -hmm. which is now being what was able to be able to ship to or distributed to other parts of the regions. Mm -hmm. And we got to have this amount of money generated, this amount of money going to taxation, this number of people in, in employed and all that. Okay. Now we, we do have to uh, uh, also admit that this practice has been going on for a very long, long time. time yeah. And so a lot of data has obviously been what being Got generated it, yeah. for all of that. And that is what could be used to for decision makers in their daily-to-day -day activities. Then you talk about our way of life. That is with regards to employment, what we do every day and how it affects us. Yeah. So I would say that, you know, generally as as people, and I, I always say that many of the instances, because we don't understand or appreciate data, mm -hmm. we mostly tend to rely on what we think we know okay. to make some statements or um, a hypothesis, let me put it that way. And when we make those hypotheses, what really has to be done now is we then have to be able to test it as to see whether what we have been able to say is true or not. Yeah. So people say that uh, road accidents is killing a lot of people mm -hmm. every day and that we should be doing a lot about it on how to reduce it and all. Yeah. You know, generally, when it comes to that, one of the things that we are likely to do is that we may want to compare certain information that we have gathered. Mm -hmm. So if it is a unit at the United Nations that is investigating about road accidents mm -hmm. and how it's affecting citizens of a particular country, mm -hmm. then they are not going to look at Ghana as a whole. They are going to compare a lot of statistics, mm. what is happening in other country, what is the sort of road type that they have, mm -hmm. what is their transport system, mm -hmm. and what does the players in the transport industry really help or not. And when all of this information has been gathered, then mm -hmm. do you remember that at the end of the day, when we have been able to generate those insights from them, mm -hmm. we are obviously going to make it, use it to make decisions. Yeah. And that is where decision makers can be you know, be given some recommendation. I think that we should be able to use this sort of means, you know, uh, make sure that our drivers flying on the road, we should be able to adopt an intelligent transport system so that mm -hmm. we are able to reduce some of the challenges that we have. Maybe we are not we are going to ban. Um, the, the import of maybe second-hand um, yeah, uh, spare, uh, spare parts or cars, or cars and all that. Yeah. Yes. The data will speak for us. But in some instances, mm -hmm. when, the, when this sort of data or, 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 or the results have been communicated, mm -hmm. many times people do dispute them. Mm. Why? Because we do have our own informed yeah. hypothesis that yeah. we agree to. Yeah. I think that we, you and I will agree that corruption is a, is a challenge in the country. Yeah, 100%. Why, why do you say so? What I, don't, you I don't want to say anything. No. <laughs> I don't yeah. want someone. <laughs> yeah, so, yes, so it is, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is always like what we think versus what the data tells us. If the data speaks and the data tells us that this is what we have achieved, mm -hmm. then it is not the responsibility of everyone to be able to relate and uh, accept that this is what the data says. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for instance, I have 1,200 people mm -hmm. who have ran randomly viewed or uh, watched the video on YouTube. Um, this is to say that everyone should be able to subscribe to 
Oh. The channel and be watching oh. this wonderful episode. Oh. Aside from enjoying my cooking skills, you do also learn as well. So, yeah. if 1,200 people have randomly watched the video, mm -hmm. how do you know that one, this is the number of females or male who have watched the video? In which particular um, geographic area? At what time? Yes. Which what? aspect of yes. the video? Okay. Were they interested interested. in? Interested. How did they even make their decision based on the video they watched? So they will give you ratings, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that the video was good, the presentation was so nice, mm -hmm. but this and all that. Mm -hmm. How do we also understand that somebody could just come into the show and say that I think your video should be premier to only ladies? Yeah. Why would the person say, oh, it's my friends, ladies' friends who always share it with me? Oh, but interesting. That, yeah. yes. But can you base our decision on just that? No. No. Until we go into this 1200 and analyze the male and female numbers, and they say, okay, this is the number of male, this is the number of females who are watching the video by this percentage, by that percentage. Mm -hmm. That is when we can come to a conclusion, right? So, if Ghana says that, or there's, I think that now they say there is doom so, um, because there's mm -hmm. an unstable power situation that comes. That is. is not to say that we should, we should have doom so right now, but um, <laughs> that is the situation. That, and and then we are looking at how are Ghanaians generally, you know, coping with this situation. Mm -hmm. So if you go out there and wow. interview about five people and they say that it is a very bad situation where they live. Mm -hmm. Then we are looking at one, where do they live? What was the situation a year before and now? And oh, what, wow. Yes. Sometimes even past data. Yes, it's our past. Oh, wow. Like, a, Interesting. A lot of those. We are also going to compare our performance so far as the generation is mm -hmm. concerned mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. other countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because remember that Ghana is under, we subscribe to the United Nations um, SDG. So yeah. a lot of things, yes, clean energy, access to yeah. that and all those. Women empowerment. Yes. Do you remember free, that? Yeah. Yeah. Access of, to education. And yes. At the end of the year, there, there's a lot of evaluation that will be done. So we'll be given a score. So we compare all of our, all those ratings and we look at how well we are fed. And if, if all of this information is also giving us a lot more insight, Mm -hmm. and we can relate it to it very well, then that's where we know that we have come to a better world, a better part of, part of what, what we are doing. So generally, it still goes back to data literacy. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so um, we, we are almost done with um, Derek's food. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I just have one last question to ask you, right? Yeah. So it's it's all about from where you sit. Um, what is the most shocking or surprising thing you've come to know of or heard of when it comes to data literacy among your colleagues, your friend at work, or even the whole world at large? What's the most shocking thing that? Yeah, and once we are done. Um, I, I think I have something little that we can talk about for okay. just a few seconds, yeah. No problem. <laughs> one third. Yes, one third of the world's population. So... Oh, that's too small. So if you are about, let's say the world population is 6 billion, mm -hmm. then we are talking about just 2 billion of the people who can relate with data very well. Yeah. And this is very, um, it's a very, a big situation for us mm -hmm. because we we are living in the world now where everything we do we gather data from mm -hmm. so if it's just one third of us who can relate with this sort of data that is being gathered and what is being used for and how we can you know make decisions out of that then it's obvious that we are lacking behind so much. In in some situation, people do say that, or I, I also subscribe to that, that we have not really gone far with so far as technology is concerned. 
And this is because if technology has really gone so faster, mm -hmm. then we should be able to solve a lot of problems without having any challenge. Do you agree with me that we have not been successful as the world so far as you know dealing with COVID-19 is concerned? Yeah. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why? Because we are we go from stage one, we talk about another wave, and talk about another wave. Yeah. Currently, we are in the third wave. European countries are having a lot of challenge with, you know, um, containing the cases that they are recording daily. Uh, Sweden, that used to be very successful so far as COVID was concerned. Mm -hmm. It's now the European country that is having new cases, more new cases every day. Every day. We know the situation in UK. Yeah. In yeah. Brazil, they are recording the highest death per every day in the world. In India, they are recording more cases now. So what is the situation? The situation still comes back to the fact that we don't appreciate data. So you, you still agree with me that there are people who say that I won't put on nose masks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I won't wash my hands because I don't think there's anything um, existing in the world called coronavirus. coronavirus. There are a lot of practices that is actually hampering or not helping us to be able to use data to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And this is where technology obviously fails because technology doesn't only need to be a tool. Mm -hmm. Tech is not just the tool that I can use to do this, I can use it. Tech has to be something that moderates my way of life. Mm. Because the design for a tool, um, a product that you have, what goes into the, what design you're supposed to use for your yeah. interface mm -hmm. has to be a lot of design. I mean, a lot of a lot of them. You have to pick this and say, "Oh, this is them." I mean, let's use this. You have to pick this and say, "This is not nice." So it's supposed to moderate the way we live mm. and the way we live our lives. That is okay. what has been it. But this is a situation where. I'm presenting you facts and figures. I'm telling that when we had a lockdown, or before lockdown, this is the number of cases that we could have because we could trace about 200,000 individuals mm -hmm. very well who have come in contact with people who had COVID. Then, after the lockdown, we said that we may be able to reduce this number of contacts to maybe 50,000 mm -hmm. because now there was what? No movement, mm -hmm. especially in our major cities. Mm -hmm. And if I present you with these figures and you can't relate with them and understand that this is the reason and you say that, well, maybe it's by some divine something that this is happening. And I think that we have a major problem to deal with. And that is where we find ourselves so far as data literacy or data adoption is concerned. Is concerned. Yeah. Right. One of the things I can also talk about has to do with, I think we'll talk about it, but there are three processes that are involved in this. We are looking at adoption, we are looking at education, and we are looking at regulation. Yeah. So if you are if you are adopting, I mean, every every institution is trying to adopt data driven um, approach to solve mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. But we are also talking about regulation, and we are also talking about dedication. And then the, the, the dedication is where there is so much gap that we need to deal with. Uh, for the adoption, any organization that has um, um, a new CEO or mm -hmm. board that really understand and appreciate technology or data, or obviously want to adopt data-driven uh, policies or guidelines that will help them. But one of the challenges when the framework you're supposed to operate within are also lacking and every player in the industry can decide to do whatever they want to do with the data. Okay. And so you do agree with me that sometimes you receive some text messages, text messages from yeah. organizations that you have not subscribed. Subscribe. To. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. This reminds me of a funny thing that I read on Gmail. No, sometimes Gmail will just have to get an education. I do want to unsubscribe from this. Yeah. But that is a mail you never subscribe, subscribe to. to. So how yeah. did it happen? Yeah. Yeah. And these are yeah. The, these yeah. are all of them. By the time you say that I'm unsubscribing from this, then I mean uh, the, whatever data that has been tracked from you has not yeah. So we have a lot more responsibility to do it and I don't think um it's only limited to myself or yourself, yourself. who understand data. 
but I think it has to go down to everybody. Interesting. It's, it's been a very good um, interactive conversation today and I believe that you've actually learned a whole lot when it comes to um, data literacy and um, another time Derek will come back and we will talk about um, data protection because, because sorry, we, because we can't just be um, data driven literate, right, without knowing how to protect ourselves when it comes to we're giving data, we're receiving data, and even how we can use our data around the internet. Because, you know, data is rich, but how you use it really affects us, or it can also break us. So Derek, um, we will quickly set, I know that you're done, so yeah. we'll quickly set this up. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Okay, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning, still tuning with us. Um, so Derek is done with his food. And this is the most favorite aspect of the show for me. Um, we've learned together, we've picked some nuggets together, and we know how best to um, utilize data that we get up, um, uh, moving forward, right? Um, leave in the comment box all your questions that you have for Derek and myself. And also, if you have anything that you've learned in um, data science, right? Especially when it comes to um, data literacy, data protection, and etc. Just show it to us, and um, definitely we will continue the conversation through the comment box. Um, Derek is done. His food is colorfully aligned, right? But I am yet to taste it to um, verdict him. But before that, Derek has a project that he is embarking on, and I will give him the opportunity to talk about it because since we are talking about data literacy today, and maybe if you want to learn more about data uh, literacy, sorry, he's the right person to hear from. So Derek, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your project and if someone wants to get involved in it, yeah. how can they also reach you? Okay, so thank you very much. Um, I think I've done a very wonderful work. Yeah. Whilst he talk, I'll say. Even if you, you give me a uh, low score, my viewers will give me more. <laughs> so um, I think the, yes, the conversation today has been more about data literacy. And I think that as uh, individuals and um, organizations or professionals, uh, what we can do to make sure that we have enough of data literate people around us so that we don't struggle to deal with data is what the goal has to be now. And I think that this is not something that we can just do in a day. Um, it's something that has to be a lifetime learning experience. So myself and a good number of um, people, um, professionals, like-minded people decided to run this project called the Data Literacy Lab. And one of the important things that I want to do with Data Literacy Lab is to have something called a libretto. Libretto is just like a playbook. And what we have been able to gather now is the uh, better version of the what the goes into data literacy. So currently we are partnering with institutions, including universities, uh, government institutions, uh, the private sector, and any player who will be much interested, CSOs, uh, NGOs, because these institutions deal with a lot of uh, data. And then yeah. of course, they need to have people who understand what the, the data that they are working with. And what we will do is that we'll be running workshops, we'll be running um, simulations with this individuals and I mean, like I said uh, to some of them we can just even give you our libretto and what we expect that you can even have it as part of your training within an organization so if it is that every month or every week you organization do have I mean meetings that you have where you share knowledge and how things are supposed to be and all that mm -hmm. you can decide to just run through one of the model Okay. About how this so if it's about data culture today you can talk about data culture. Oh interesting. Yes, the organization every member of the organization gets to contribute to at the end of the day what you have been able to learn. Mm. Then you do some exercise and all that. You take videos, pictures, 
you upload to our platform and then we learn Charlie, this that. this 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 is going to be fun yes that is the one aspect of it um the, i'll get involved yes, the, i was that, serious yeah. especially since you know i love to run programs yeah. that are in tech yes. i'll definitely get involved no and problem. see how i can use my specialities to exactly. embark so what you people guys are like doing you are, what you are looking for i know a lot of your viewers yeah. Will also be interested in yeah. doing some of these. So yeah, to yeah. anyone watching who is interested in supporting you in yeah. terms of um, in kind or even through human resources, yeah. right? I think yeah. how can they reach reach you and yeah. how can yeah how can they reach you to support? Okay, so currently we do have only the data literacy lab uh, page on um, LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, that is where we are growing our community support from. Okay. And then we before we can go on to other social media platforms. But like I said, the, the work actually is going to happen on ground okay. where we have to visit institutions, go into schools, make sure we have collaboration with the institutional heads. Yeah. They understand what we are doing because I think it is not something that should benefit myself because I want to have people in it. It's something that has to be a national yeah. So, Like yeah. I said, our main goal is that we should have a data literate continent. Yeah. Because we have a population of over 1.3 billion, and we do have about even half of this population who yeah. do understand data by the year 2030, and are very data literate, then I think we are much better, better than where we are now. All right. The second part of it is that we are opening up an opportunity for people or professionals who have data knowledge, mm. and they can use data about Ghana to tell stories. Storytelling is actually important and it's actually fun when you have data supporting your storytelling yeah. line. Trust me, this is really... Eva, when, when I first saw it on your um, LinkedIn post, yeah. I was like, man, I'm really interested in this one. But yeah. before I get in touch with him, let me try and bring him on the show. Yeah. to have a conversation around data literacy yeah. before I can also dive deep into the project as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Derek, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, how do they reach you? Yeah, so like I, I first mentioned, we are building a community on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. But myself, I use my email most of the time. Uh, He's mostly on Twitter, please. <laughs> no, uh, mostly on Twitter. Twitter. Send him if I worry him on Twitter. He's Twitter, very active just, over there. I just go to Twitter to... I mean, I follow a lot of people on Twitter, but I don't want followers. I'm just interested in following people to learn from them but that's not, that's really not cool. because i want followers to be following my first people. time of hearing someone say i don't want followers but mm -hmm. i love to follow people which means follow, that follow, he loves to give back i follow to a lot the community. of people i'm not interested in having 20k or whatever k i mean it's if they come fine but that is not a goal <laughs> all right now <laughs> then the other thing yeah is that, so like you, you mentioned if you want to reach me by mail um that that's my email is just derek um jr560 at gmail.com okay and like it's it's something that we are in process so yeah i don't want to be like we already made with what we're doing yeah. i want everyone to be part of this because if i have to use my data uh, expertise to do all of this. Then what will happen is that I'll be miles away from you who want to start off with me. Yeah. And understand how the two come. Let's start the journey together. Okay. Let's learn together. All right. So that's why we don't. We have not started anything. What we started with is just a page on LinkedIn. Yeah. So we are starting this together. When you come and say, oh, Derek, I think we should create this uh, platform so that we can use it to. Create. We are waiting for you to come and support us with your expertise. So whilst I go to fetch water for us to wash our hands, Derek, I would want you to look straight into the camera and give your words of motivation when it comes to how best we can use data literacy to do the right thing. And anything that you want to share on the data, please, just look straight into the camera and just let us know. Okay. I think first of the first of all, the most important thing that we need to understand about data literacy is the fact that it is everyone's business, and it's everyone's business because we all come into contact with data, and we should be able to understand it in the first place, and be able to share it responsibly. 
You know, data sharing responsibility is one thing that we don't tend to focus much on. But I think the responsibility lies with us when I have a piece of information about you or have, um, some information or data about people and then I can use it for the benefit of them. Mm -hmm. If I'm not doing that, then I'm not being responsible also. By being responsible, I need to be ethical, I need to be conforming to the regulations or frameworks within which we are all supposed to work. So, um, like I said, it's everyone's business. Uh, whatever, uh, whatever way you find yourself, whether you find yourself in um, a religious organization, whether you are working for humanity, whether you are working as an NGO, whether you are working for yourself, or whether you are now trying to find a job, it is still a responsibility that you need to be part of. And it's a process that we are all supposed to be responding to and make sure that we do it for the betterment of our own people. Let's do this for the betterment of our own people and also to the nation as well. Um, so now I'm about to eat his food and give, no, I'm about to eat his food and verdict him. So um, I'll start with the yam, right? Like I said, and, oh, you can join me. Oh. The viewers. But honestly, I'm not the Mecca. Oh, yeah, the also Mecca because I'm not the Mecca. I'm not the Mecca. I'm not the Mecca. I'm not I'll be honest. Into now, first taste um, the yam to to know the salt. Mo shi me yim dem. The viewers show you here. But yeah, they are. Oh, not short taste. In China, na your man be big a crap. But it's good. It's soft. Into your fan yama. Oh. I'm not from where I am. I'm not from the mud. It's like oh, I love how it's soft. Like it's really soft. I'm not from the mud. So whether rain or shine, fan or no fan, still quite soft. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So this is a combination of pepper, garlic. Just hope that we don't have any tomato and salmon. Hmm. Mm. Good, right? <laughs> I think that Mindy by a way, a bombi did that because most of the Mindy be on go and go good. Yeah, yeah, that, this me, you know. Mm. I said, try it at home. Yeah, it's something that we just came up with. Oh, this is really nice. Yeah, especially Thanks to when, when you add the salmon to it now, would mm. the show with at the same time? Uh, I man, this kind of flavor. Mm. B-O-A-3 okay. and I really like it. Oh, nice, nice. I really like it. You can, you can, you can, yes. I say, no, no, we will, hmm, I will get that. I will get that. This question. Mom, what's your trivia or camera you do? What's your trivia or camera you do? You have a girlfriend. I respect you. Yeah. I respect you. I love it for the fact that you've been bold enough to acknowledge that you have a girlfriend. So please, yeah. he is taken. Stop worrying him. In, in his DM, a friend of mine, Chicken Bessie, stop that. Mm -hmm. You need to stop that. <laughs> you understand? So yeah, he is taken. That's really nice. Yeah. Um, shout out um, to the lovely woman who has taking him away from us um, please take care of him because you are a mommy feeling him pa and him now you're off at your mama with you anyway i've been doing a easy eye so there is let's let's just eat oh, it's okay yeah but i really i really like it yeah like i said anytime you want to have this just invite me and i think you can actually prepare this food using just 10 gallons you know because of the salmon mm. you spend about 15 cities no. Yeah, because if you get I salmon, heard, heard if you are the only one. Some, some, some of the fishes in the sea were affected recently. Oh, Charlie. What, what, what happened? Hmm. Do I even know? Hmm. I heard of it, the, the dolphins, right? Yeah. Yeah, the dolphins and the sharks. That's right. Yeah. So, guys, yeah, you can actually try this recipe at home. Yeah. It's, it's, it's um, 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 less cost effective so you can 
Hmm. Just get 20 CDs, buy a yam, mm -hmm. buy a salmon, tomato, pepper, um, garlic, and that's it. So we are done for today, Derek. Thank you for blessing my show today with your knowledge, yeah. your wisdom in your field and also cooking for me. Yeah. Because I've never had your handmade food before. Oh, okay. And this is the first time and I really enjoy it. It's very fortunate because my girlfriend has never tasted my food. Hey, yeah. Allah, 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 Allah. By the way, yeah, we are done. Um, thank you very much for watching this episode throughout. <laughs> and um, I really appreciate your effort, the data that you spend on watching this um, episode. This shows the love that you have for us. And if you love this content, I mean, this very episode and any other episode that um, you've watched so far on our channel, please like it, um, give it a thumbs up. And um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And please hit the notification bell if you indeed loved this particular episode. Hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime we release new episode. Um, see you on the next episode. And um, without further ado, bye-bye.